everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft video. This is Mythical Sausage. How is everybody doing, man? We're back again with another Minecraft video and today we're going to be going over eight different path designs that you can make in your world using different types of biomes as the backdrop. This is super fun and let me know what you guys think. Let me know which one is your favorite and let me know what we missed. What do you want to see in an upcoming video? But for right now, let's do the one that's right behind me. All right, and here we go with our very first path. Now, this path design is actually my favorite. It's my go-to one. It's my default. This you can go and put in any situation, any biome, and you'll be good to go. The best thing about these paths is that it's very organic. Most of my paths are, but this, it doesn't follow a straight line. And usually, I don't go for the straight line approach, unless you're going for something more modern, more suburban. Uh, when you're out in the wilderness, you really want to go ahead and make it as curved and windy as possible. The way I set this one up, Primarily, the path block is the center of the path. Next to the path block, we got some coarse dirt, a little bit of gravel, a little bit of podzo, wherever we have any kind of bush and foliage around. And uh, not only does the path look cool, but the surrounding area does too. Whenever you set up any kind of path, just don't think of the path. Think of the, uh, the surrounding areas to make the path pop even more by adding fences, by adding bushes, by adding tall grass, by adding trees, custom trees to kind of overlap and overhang over these paths. These add the detail more than the path really does. So this is really, really cool. Also, another thing that you want to set up is if you're in survival, you need lighting. So certain situations call for hidden lighting. Other situations call for maybe just lights right on a little fence post like this to add to that detail as you go ahead and navigate through these paths. But this is path number one, and it is one of my favorites. Now here we go with path number two. Now this pathway design is something you would typically see in a taiga or mega taiga. We're using a lot of spruce here on the bottom. We're gonna have some spruce planks, some trap doors, some slabs, also some oak logs. If you see the beams here, they're kind of like on the border, on the edge. Also, this is a curved pathway. If you notice, it kind of curves in comes back out and then also elevations do we have different elevations going up to this side using the stairs the slabs and the trap doors it gives you almost like a gradual slope going up to the next elevation and then just like we did before uh this one also has details to the left to the right to draw your eye as you turn these paths we got custom trees we got little rock formations on each side we got some overgrown some bushes also another difference is this one also has lighting but this one's all hidden so for that one next door we have have uh, lighting on fences here we have lighting hidden within the trap door so we have lights in here coming down lights in there and that's another way that you can light your paths without actually having to put any kind of fences around uh, or any kind of like just open exposed lights anywhere so this is really really cool but this I know I say it all the time, but this is really one of my favorites. They're all my favorites going down this road. But this one, being that it's something that you would see in a taiga, and a taiga is my favorite biome, this is something I would use a lot. Now here we go with pathway number three. This one is really, really cool. It's something that you would typically see in a swamp, or maybe even a jungle biome, which is really, really cool. This one has some spruce trap doors, some jungle slabs, some unlit campfires, jungle logs, and some nice over the head here, lighting here in these posts, which is pretty much really simple. It's just some spruce fences with spruce trapdoor and slab, hanging lanterns, and we also have the uh, the zigzag pattern. <laughs> you gotta go with the zigzag pattern. And also, what also makes this stand out even more is the elevation from the water. So we're really only one up extra from the water, and uh, also make sure when you do these awesome pathways here that the the grounds the the water the swamp looks very swampy for this one we're adding different bits of detail we got some podzo we also have some gravel we have some mossy in here some tall grass some kelp and a little bit of our vines and you know what also sells it these beautiful lily pads you gotta add those lily pads uh, other little bits of detail on this path we have some flower pots with a fern on one side dead bush on another one and this one is looking really cool. I would love to see this in a large scale. Imagine a bunch of little huts just scattered on stilts in a jungle or in a swamp in this style. I would love to see that. You guys like to see something like that? Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more of this style in a whole village situation. Now here we go with pathway number four. We are in the desert. Now for desert builds, it could be pretty boring. It could be pretty boring. There's a lot of sand and nothing else. So the way you can remedy that Give yourself a little bit of ways to go and detail the sand. That is the most important thing. Not only the path, we'll get to the path in a second, but the sand. I wish we had layers of sand like we do with snow. That would be so cool. We could detail this even more, but for right now, the smooth 
slab and smooth stair of our sandstone is the go-to block to make sure all these little sand dunes get a little bit more curved. If you notice all these curves here with the stairs and slabs going all the way around, and that gives you a nice little bit of detail. Also, mixing in some regular old sandstone is pretty good. You have almost like that cracked, rocky sand that's kind of in certain spots here, and that does more than the actual path. But once you're about to do the path, I think adding just regular dirt, coarse dirt, even a little bit of granite does the trick, making it pop even more. And then also the birch plank, since it has a very similar texture to sandstone and sand, it's really cool to add that in the path, almost like it's kind of like pieces of sand kind of accumulated in here, but with a little more texture. Adding some grass also, just to break up that, uh, just that sand color, that yellow and that brown from that coarse dirt and regular dirt, that little bit of green, it does so, it does the trick. Also the green of our cactus, of course, we gotta add those. Adding some dead bush also does the trick. We're also using our boy Jermsey Boy's Better Leaf add-on. It's a texture pack that makes the birch leaves yellow and it's a perfect <laughs> uh, bush for this area. Adding that little bit of yellow bush, it looks really, really cool. Also. Lighting, you don't see any lights here either, but there is glows. You know how we're doing this? We're doing it with some carpet. So brown carpet on top of glowstone does the trick. We have them scattered in a certain spots. You can even put them underneath the bush here and also a little more on that side. If you notice, we also added some of the brown mushroom blocks right here. If you notice what those blocks are, it looks so good, especially added to the coarse dirt and the dirt in there. But yeah, th this is uh, the best way that you can decorate and have a cool path in the desert. It's my go-to path for deserts. Now here we go with pathway number five. Now this one is one of my personal favorites. It's very medieval-ish. This is something that I would see maybe in an extreme hills, uh, even back into the plains. It works well, really in any biome, but uh, let's just say this is the extreme hill side. We're a little more hilly right here. We're a little more elevated, but this one is pretty much just all the stones. <laughs> we have some cobble, some stone brick, some regular stone, some andesite, and we have a nice little path. And again, organic diagonals. Uh, we have a nice path that kind of swings around. No straight lines. Straight lines would be good too. It would still look nice, but the organic uh, look of this just makes it pop even more. Also, if you notice, some of these have stairs kind of broken in, and some of these are actually waterlogged, which is pretty cool. Kind of like water uh, just, st just stood there and it stayed there after a, a nice shower. Then to dress it up on the sides, we have little rock formations kind of pushing up against these walls. We have ferns, tall grass, extra bush. This is our lovely old uh, spruce bush right there. And then the lights, these are exposed just on top of walls, making it very, very simple. You can also make lamppost designs, but making it simple like this actually um, draws your eye to the path more than just, just an intricate uh, light post or something like that, which is also a plus if you want to really show off this path. But I love this one. This is really, really cool, uh, but definitely giving that medieval castle-y feel that I love to show. Now here we go with pathway number six. This one's something you would typically see in a mesa and it has blocks that I usually don't use but I need to use them more often because they go so well together. Let me show you this. So we kind of elevated this path. Don't be afraid to elevate your path. You don't have to go straight into the ground flush with everything else around. You can elevate it and this is a way to do it. And this one we have some regular terracotta. We have some brick. We have some granite. We have some jungle wood and then we have a spruce lining with uh, trap doors, slabs and stairs all the way around like this and it looks so cool i love this path and also organic curve your path give it a little interesting twist to it now for the actual mesa this is something that you could do by adding uh slabs and stairs of the red sandstone on top of the red sand uh bringing in a little bit of bush here for greenery on top of your cactus we have some oak here some dead bushes here on top of some coarse dirt some podzol adds even more even throw in some of the red sandstone uh stairs or the smooth red sandstone stairs uh into the ground giving you that cool little rocky effect and you can add that all the way around i imagine this on a large scale it would look really really cool and here we go with pathway number seven. Now this one, you can tell it's snowy. It's a snowy biome. This is really, really cool. The thing about this one is that you wanna make the snow be piled up, piled up high in multiple layers. Have yourself a nice little skinny path so when you're walking here, you can see the snow kind of like pushed off, banked to the side here in different snow layers. Also, this is one of the only builds that I would be okay 
with adding a little bit of diorite. We got some diorite slabs, regular diorite, polished diorite in here. It looks like dirty snow. It's okay. On top of being bird poop, dirty snow is also a good way to put it. And it goes good with any kind of snowy biome. Also, we added some of this dead brain coral, which looks really, really cool in this situation. Uh, whenever we clear out a little bit of pathway here for the snow, uh, I added a little bit of gravel, some smooth stone, some coarse dirt, and just make sure your path is dug down into the ground and then push up the snow up against the sides. Even little caves like this work well. If you notice some of these, you have some slabs, you got some stairs, and this is the smooth quartz, which go really good also with snow. If you wanted to make almost like a nice little cavey feel here, uh, but it looks very, very cold. I'm just, I'm, I'm cold just looking at it. <laughs> but use your snow to your advantage. Pile up in different layers and different uh, locations here to give it a nice curve to it and look like it's very, very piled high. And uh, since we can't have this for any other block, uh, use, use it to your advantage. Take advantage of the snow layers. <laughs> They're really, really cool. One of the coolest blocks you can play around, especially when you're messing with paths and terrain. Now here's our eighth and final path. This is some ice spike biome paths. And this one is so cool. I love this one. And now if you notice some of these, it, well, this is right by the water. So we have almost like a fisherman vibe sort of thing. Maybe a little bit Nordic. I'm getting a little bit, maybe even some elvish vibes here with this color palette of our dark prismarine. I added also that break coral again. We added some stone break and also some cyan terracotta. Looks very good combined with this. Some snow layers just uh, randomly scattered here. Uh, you can just put them as you see fit, just in certain spots here on this path. Uh, and then we also have these little ice spikes uh, drawing your eye and your attention to it. I can imagine this is like uh, goes into uh, a village and maybe out into a dock, into a pier somewhere. And then you can fish off here to the side. We have some barrels uh, and also uh, some fishing rods, some compost. There's even some fish in a barrel right there looking really, really cool. Again, organic path, curve. Uh, and it just brings out that detail. The, the barrels though and the details around it really do sell it. Uh, that is something you can really just hang out and fish over, even though, uh, you know, ah, it's really cold down there, be careful. Uh, but we also have uh, this going all the way down on the bottom here uh, with some mossy, uh, also the logs going down. So this is something I could definitely see on a large scale, and it would be pretty cool to add this to a village somewhere. But what do you guys think of this one? But that is it, eight pathway designs. What do you guys think? This was so much fun to make. Let me know again if there's any other paths you would like to see, any other styles, any other biomes. Uh, and I would love to do another one of these. This was so much fun and so much inspiration just to keep building path designs. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything on terraforming uh, as well. Uh, and maybe if you want to see villages in any one of these styles, connecting these paths, it, it, they're cool, but they're even cooler when you connect them from one uh, village to another. <laughs> let me know what you guys think, but I'm out of here for now. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been amazing. I'll catch you on the next Minecraft video. Goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha